Good morning everybody and welcome back to another episode of my RuneScape Oddities mini-series. RuneScape Oddities is all about going over interesting historical moments uh, from the last 20 years of RuneScape. I've had these ideas written down for a couple months now, but on their own they're a little bit too small to make into a single video, so today we're going to be going over three or four separate stories. Now this could include memorable things like glitches, exploits, stuff like that, but also just interesting historical events and other things you may have forgotten about RuneScape's history. This game has been around a long time now and somebody could probably write an entire book on the history of this community. Now if you guys have any interesting stories that I haven't covered, let me know with a comment down below. I'm always uh, crowdsourcing video ideas. <laughs> you know, I make a lot of videos so I burn through ideas pretty quickly. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave it a like. It really does help the video get recommended uh, to other people who for some reason haven't seen my channel before. Anyway guys, let's get started. Now to start us off here, we're going to jump all the way back to the 2005 and 2006 era of RuneScape. Now in hindsight, Castle Wars has been probably one of the more abused minigames in RuneScape's history. Now one of the biggest ways that you can abuse Castle Wars is by smuggling items out of there. Pretty well all of the items in Castle Wars you're not supposed to leave with, and unfortunately if somebody actually manages to smuggle something out of there, it doesn't usually interact very well. Uh, with the main game, as at that time the developers didn't have many fail safes in place, as nobody ever expected those items to ever leave Castle Wars. This caused a whole bunch of issues, and for example bandages that were smuggled out could be used to scam people to Duel Arena. Now another really interesting item that was smuggled out of Castle Wars in that time era was actually the barricade. Now in Castle Wars, a barricade was used to block someone else's path. You can kind of understand why they never implemented something like that, in the overworld, as it would be pretty easy to troll people, block people's way, block uh, important quest points, banks, so that mechanic was never allowed. That was of course until a fairly well-known bug abuser by the name of the Tainted One managed to smuggle out a Castle Wars barricade. Now throughout RuneScape's history there's actually been quite a few different ways to smuggle out Castle Wars items. One popular way was to use the Niles or Giles random event uh, which would actually note your Castle Wars barricades or bandages. When an item is noted, it actually changes its item ID, and as Castle Wars only checked for a very specific item ID when it's doing its failsafe checks, it didn't catch that, thus allowing people to smuggle out bandages. Another popular way around the 2007 era was to use something called a forced teleport. By abusing some dual arena mechanics, you could enter Castle Wars, grab bandages or barricades, and then have your dueling partner leave the dual arena, if you had it set up properly, you would actually teleport out of Castle Wars with the items. As we already covered how abusable bandages could be, but what about barricades? Well, they're actually pretty bad as well. Now the Castle Wars barricade actually worked the exact same way that it did in Castle Wars if you placed it anywhere around Gilinor. Now you obviously could place it wherever you wanted, and most places would just be kind of novel. Uh, someone would look at it and be like, hey cool, you got that out of Castle Wars, good job. But as you could imagine, if you put it in specific places, you could definitely piss off a lot of players. For example, putting it at a bank entrance. For example, here at the West Rock Bank, they managed to put it right in front of the bank. Now normally this wouldn't be such a big deal, you can kill the barricade, which is enough damage. After a while, it will die. However, if someone is constantly attacking it with magic and not dealing any damage, i.e. splashing, there isn't really a way for anyone to kill the barricade. So it was actually possible to lock people in areas, block off banks for example, and uh, yeah people are actually getting pretty pissed off. <laughs> Another really good example here is they're actually managing to block off the dual arena bank chest, constantly splashing, no one can actually access it or leave that actually unfortunately happened to be on that exact tile. You can see here everyone just calling him a bug abuser, getting kind of annoyed, uh, and well probably should just world hop. So overall definitely not a damaging bug by any means, but really interesting. Obviously it got patched out pretty quickly, but I think it's cool and an interesting piece of RuneScape history. Now another really interesting thing that happened back in 2006 was actually a bug with construction. Now obviously there were a few issues with construction at that time, i.e. the Falador Massacre as well as a few other issues obviously. Now one other somewhat overlooked bug at the time actually had to do with one of the new items that was released with construction that was being the Heraldric Rune items. Now while still being a pretty underused item today, Heraldric Rune items, and specifically the Kite Shield, were an interesting cosmetic change to both the Steel Kite Shield and the Rune Kite Shield. Essentially, if you had completed certain requirements, you could paint the Kite Shield to match a certain god, uh, to match a certain quest that you did, or a few other things. 
Now the issue came about pretty much on the release date of construction. When they released all these new heraldic items, they actually forgot to put a defense requirement on both the painted steel kite shield and the painted rune kite shield. Now the steel kite shield wasn't such a big issue, but the rune kite shield was massive. All of a sudden, one defense peers could actually wear a rune kite shield, granted for a very short period of time. This was very quickly patched, and even to this day there's not that much information on it. But honestly, in hindsight, this was not nearly the biggest issue that would come with the construction over the next year. Okay, so next up here we actually have something that I personally remember. Uh, my tiny brain was finally developed enough to understand what was going on around me, and all of a sudden there was a guy running past me with a box. Now this was called the box noob glitch or the box glitch, and I remember being so impressed at the time. Really, I guess objectively it's not that impressive, it's really just somebody running around with a giant box that they're holding in both their hands. I believe this was originally discovered around the 2008-2009 era, but it actually popped back up a couple times, uh, more notably with the release of old school RuneScape at the very beginning, the glitch was still around. Now that was mainly because they took a snapshot from 2007, and a lot of the glitches at the time still existed, stuff like the Corporal Beast glitch, obviously this box glitch, and a few others. Now this was simply a graphical glitch, and to do it you needed to have not completed the Death to the Dorgishin quest. Now at a certain point during the quest, you put Zanuck into a box. Now you're not really meant to ever leave that area, and the animation was originally intended just to be localized to that area. However, if you knew what you were doing, and knew how to do something called interface stalling, you were actually able to smuggle the box out, and I guess I suppose Zanuck as well. Now the way you do this is you click somewhere on your mini-map, and then immediately open up an interface. For example, this player was doing it with the Cocktail Shaker. This would do an interface stall, which essentially would prevent other things from happening. The other thing being checking that you still have this giant box you were running away with. Now assuming that you opened up your interfaces at the proper time, you could continuously move around with Zanuck in a box. I remember being ridiculously impressed by this at the time, and honestly it did take quite a bit of work to move around. Now this glitch was originally discovered by none other than a player named The Box Noob, and that is kind of why the glitch is named after him. This glitch actually kind of cemented him as a RuneScape icon, as at the time so many people wanted to know how to do it, so it kind of gave him a bit of a cult following. Now if we jump way back to RuneScape Classic, there is a type of item that actually has had more glitches associated with it, than any other, and that is alcoholic beverages. I decided to put these two together because, well, they were related by one common theme, alcohol. Now the two items in question here are, for one, regular beer and regular wine. Now initially when they were released, they both had a mechanic that allowed you to abuse them, but kind of in opposite ways. Now first up here we have one of the very first glitches ever discovered in RuneScape Classic, and that is the beer glitch. Now this glitch was very easy to execute back in the day, all you simply had to do is drink a bunch of beer. There was no cap to how many strength levels you could gain from it. Uh, so essentially, if you had 100 beers, you could just boost yourself to 100 strength, go on a rampage killing people. Uh, so that was eventually fixed, but on the polar opposite of the spectrum, we have the wine. The wine actually lowered your attack, and you wouldn't think that would be very useful initially, but there was one main use for it, and that was to make a pure account. Now wine peers existed in the game for a lot longer than the super strength glitch. Now essentially the way that you could abuse this is by using the Varrock combat dummy. Classic, there were dummies in Varrock that actually only gave you attack experience. Now under normal circumstances, this would cap at an attack level of 8, so you couldn't attack them after that, or at least you wouldn't get any experience. However, many pure accounts abuse this by drinking a bunch of wine, which would lower your attack, allow you to continue getting attack experience from the dummies, and some players would do this all the way to level 40 attack. Now, the main benefit here is you wouldn't gain any hit points experience, so you could get all the way to 40 attack, get a rune scimitar, and still have 10 hit points. I'm not really sure how good that actually was as a pure account, but it's something a lot of people did, a very time consuming process, and eventually it was fixed. These are kind of two polar opposite glitches from very similar items, as with us, pretty interesting. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have anything else you want me to cover, leave a comment down below. I do read them all. Anyway guys, before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to one of my newest members over on YouTube. Uh, Z-I-Y-L, thank you so much for subscribing at the Dragon tier. That is really awesome. Really appreciate it. They're joining James Luft, Brad Sings, Revolver Ocelot, and Kush Patel who all subscribed at the Dragon tier. You guys are crazy. 
And also a big thank you to Base Titch who is subscribed to the Runite tier. If you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. In return, you can get immortalized in some of my videos, get a custom YouTube member role in my Discord, as well as access to other perks. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.